welcome back to another video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Christian Koivuma and I'm a Swedish watercolor artist. And in today's video, I'm going to take you on a guided tour on 10 huge watercolors, just like this one, like a true watercolor nerd. Uh, and before we get started, I want to say that if you want to be a watercolor nerd like me and have a shirt like this, uh, you have the possibility to get one of your own because I have some links down below uh, to my merch. So check it out if you want to get one of these as well. Okay, let's uh, go through my watercolors. Okay guys, so this is the first painting I want to show you and it's a huge watercolor. It's uh, one and a half meter wide and one meter tall. And uh, the motif is from Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. And uh, what inspired me about this motif was obviously the beautiful architecture. This is uh, the Royal Dramatic Theater. Uh, it's called Kungliga Dramatiska Teatern in Swedish. Uh, and also something that I really wanted to capture was the people in the scene as well. And uh, this one took me forever. And uh, it's always scary to paint big motifs like this because uh, the paper itself, it's uh, pretty expensive. This is painted on Arch, uh, 640 grams per square meter. So it's, it's heavy and expensive paper. And uh, it's kind of upsetting if you screw something up. And every painting has its mistakes, uh, always does. But uh, you don't want to make any major mistakes. So it's a little scary through the whole process. And uh, what really takes time when you do a painting like this, it's the sketching before you get started, but uh, also painting all these windows. This is what takes most of the time. Painting people like this, it's pretty simple, in my opinion, uh, and in my way of painting. So, um, yeah. Well, anyways, this was a scary but fun project. And uh, I will show this in my upcoming exhibition in December. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this is the next one that I want to show you. And uh, this is also a really big uh, watercolor, but it's a little bit smaller than the previous one. Uh, it's uh, 107 centimeters wide and 75 centimeters tall. So it's, it's still a big one, but not as big. And the motif is from Stockholm. And uh, this is uh, a painting that I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I've been hesitating because I knew it was gonna take me uh, a lot of effort to finish it. Uh, I took the photo reference uh, and uh, I got really inspired when I took this photo with all the swans in the lake like this. And here you can see the royal castle and uh, the government in Sweden, the, the government building. And I did some changes from the reference photo book because when I took the photo, it was a gray day uh, and kind of boring and I wanted to have some light into it. So from my imagination, I painted this sky and uh, made sure that I had some of the sky reflected into the water here as well. And uh, this painting actually took me a uh, longer time to finish than the previous one that I showed you because of all the birds that I had to paint in. And uh, if I should talk about any of the techniques I've been using, uh, well, most of the time I paint skies wet in wet. And this is what I did this time as well. I painted the sky first wet in wet, and then I painted the water wet in wet too to start with but I did add some dry brush strokes uh, later on in the process, like these, for example. And uh, the swans were all masked before, so I used masking fluid to preserve the white of the paper. Uh, and I painted the swans in the end of the painting. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the next one. So this is the third big painting I'm going to show you. And uh, this one has the same size as the previous one. 
So it's about uh, 107 centimeters wide and 75 centimeters tall. And if you've been following me for a while, you probably noticed that one of my favorite motifs are winter motifs, and I love painting in gray, uh, just like this one. Uh, this is also uh, from Stockholm. Uh, it's a church in Stockholm here in the background, which uh, kind of inspired me for the whole scene. Uh, and when I was taking the photo, for instance, luckily uh, a boat just passed, and I figured that this would be a nice motif to paint. Uh, this painting was uh, a lot quicker than the, the previous ones uh, because it doesn't have as many difficult details. Like painting an area like this, I paint most of it wet and wet and uh, I don't pay too much attention to all the small details. Uh, I'm painting more or less in an impressionistic way, I would say. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so uh, this uh, winter landscape is uh, a painting that uh, has kind of an interesting history for me because uh, this was a painting that I felt like was completely uh, lost. I was not happy with what it looked like and uh, I had it uh, laying in a pile that I was actually thinking if I should throw it away or what should I do about it for a long time. But uh, then I decided to make some changes to it. And the changes I did was adding trees here in the background. Uh, and that all of a sudden made all the difference. So uh, don't give up on your paintings. Sometimes it just takes you a while to figure out what the next step is. And uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, known for doing these uh, winter scenes with birch trees. And since my last name, Koivuma, means birch land in Finnish, I use it as a, an argument to keep painting these motifs. And uh, this, was, uh, this was not a fun one, but I'm happy with the result. I think it's a, it's a pretty cool painting. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So here's another one in the same size. Uh, 107 centimeters by 75 and um, this is a motif that uh, I really uh, like because uh, it's up from the north of Sweden it's called Lappputten and it's a uh, it's a famous area for especially for people that like hiking and so on and uh, I love the Swedish mountains and so this is the the famous scenery I would say and it's called Lappputten I want to say something about some of the technique as well. Uh, the sky, for example, like most of the time, I paint the sky wet in wet. Uh, and when you are using warm colors like this, I normally put down the warm colors first and the cooler colors after. And uh, you can see that there is some uh, low clouds here passing the mountain as well. And these are actually created by adding intentional backgrounds. So. Uh, while the paint was drying, I added some water uh, to the drying paint. So this is a painting that I, I like the motif, I like the location, uh, and I think I like the result as well of the painting. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So this motif is also painted on Arsh uh, 640 gram. Uh, per square meter and uh, the size is the same as the, the previous one and um, this is a motif or a similar motifs like this I've been painting more lately uh, with people in them and more of a story to them uh, and this is uh, a motif pretty much painted from imagination uh, looking at different photo references just to get some ideas um, and then just hoping for the best, pretty much. And uh, I really like playing, painting uh, motifs with water lilies like this, uh, especially inspired by uh, greats like uh, Claude Monet, but also uh, the watercolor superstar Josef Subukovic, he's painted a few really nice water lily watercolors. So it's hard not to get inspired 
it's always a little scary when you're painting big paintings like this and most of it is painted wet in wet. So you can see these uh, transitions from the lighter values to darker values. All of this has been done uh, while the paint was still wet. Uh, and after the paint was completely wet, then I added some dry brush strokes to the painting, uh, like some of the tree trunks here. Uh, most of the water lilies were painted afterwards. And of course, the focal point with the, the two uh, people in the boat fishing. Okay, let's uh, go to the next one. So let's take a look at the next one. And this is a motif that I, I've done in a similar one uh, a while back. And I actually recorded it and I posted it on YouTube. Uh, that one is uh, was a little bit more grayish and like a, a different uh, feel to the sky. And this time I used a little bit more vibrant colors. But if you want to look at some of the process, because the process is uh, somewhat similar, you can find it on my YouTube channel. And if you want to look at the narrated version, you can find it on Patreon. But uh, I can say something about these uh, reeds here on the left-hand side. Most of them have been masked out and painted towards the end of the painting process. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Here's another fun uh, watercolor for you. Uh, this one, exactly like the previous ones, uh, is painted on Arch watercolor paper and uh, 640 grams per square meters. And uh, the size is 107 times 75 centimeters. And uh, I really like painting uh, starry skies or anything from space. I think it's just, so interesting to me and beautiful too. So uh, this year I actually started painting more scenes inspired from the Milky Way. I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job with the Milky Way parts, but I'm trying anyways. Uh, the sky is painted wet in wet and uh, the foreground and the bottom here is mostly painted uh, with control on dry paper. And uh, it took me actually quite some time to finish this one. Uh, I had a lot of little struggles here and there, uh, but I haven't seen this one for a while because it's been resting. And uh, now when I see it, I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of cool. So I'm happy about this one. This is a motif that uh, I also painted a similar one, but uh, probably like eight years ago. And, uh, this is actually from Old Town in Stockholm, uh, from a square there, and uh, with a lot of history. And uh, I've been wanting to paint something from uh, Old Town uh, again. And um, it's been uh, taking me a while to find good photo references. But uh, this summer I spent some time there and I took a nice photo reference that I wanted to uh, translate into watercolor. Uh, I made a few changes to this one uh, compared to the photo reference. For example, there was a car parked here, somewhere here in the center. And that's not something that I wanted in the painting. I didn't think that uh, car looked good there. So I just decided to remove it pretty much. Uh, I also did some, my own little creative solutions for different problems. Uh, and uh, one little thing was adding these uh, shadow casts on the buildings here in the background. And I'm not sure if uh, it was a good call or not, but uh, it's too late to change my mind now. Anyways, this was a, a slow process. This took me forever to finish this painting and especially painting all the windows. Painting rectangles with uh, squares like that. Uh, I don't know, for me, it's, it's just very time consuming. And you have to have a, a sturdy hand too, and that's not my strong side either. Okay guys, let's take a look at the last painting. So this is the last painting I'm gonna show you, and this one is uh, still pretty big, but it's smaller than the other ones. It's uh, 76 
by 56 centimeters. And it's also painted on arch watercolor paper and uh, it's uh, 640 grams per square meter. So it's, it's pretty heavy. And uh, I actually recorded a smaller version of uh, this painting and uh, I'm posted on uh, Patreon as a narrated video. So if you want to see how I painted this one from start to finish, then just uh, take a look at my Patreon. Um, well, as of lately, I've been painting more and more sunset paintings like this. And uh, I really enjoy the process. It's a little scary because painting wet in wet, you don't have complete control. And, and in this painting, there was a lot wet in wet and a lot of surprises. And um, sometimes the surprises work in, at your advantage and sometimes they don't. And uh, I think I have a little bit of both in this painting. Um, well, I can say something about the process anyways. Uh, painting a uh, painting like this, I like to start with the lighter values, uh, which is the sky and uh, of course the light source in the painting. So I paint that first. And uh, then after that, I start going on a little darker values. And the darkest dark are obviously the trees on the both sides of the the painting and uh, I think these are pretty important to have this uh, contrast uh, because uh, without that contrast the light won't be as uh, uh, impressive I think and as you can see I painted some water lilies here on the bottom as well always fun and also some reeds sticking up here on the left hand side and what I really appreciate about this one is actually the depth in it because it has a nice depth to it you can follow the, the stream but also you can see some pine trees sticking up further back here so uh, all in all i think it's it's kind of a, a neat painting okay guys that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed the guided tour of my huge watercolors and i'll see you in the next one bye bye